Hello everyone. We have a very exciting Facebook Live video update for you today. Uh, today I'm in Great Falls at the Montana Grain Growers Association office. We just finished up a great meeting with Senator Steve Daines and we um, there were many of the ag groups here today, us Montana Farm Bureau, Montana Grain Growers, Montana Stock Growers, some ag uh, Mon Montana Wool Growers, and also some ag business as well. And we had an excellent conversation about um, so many things that are going on at the federal level right now. Uh, we certainly appreciate your time, Senator Danes, and um, thank you for joining us on the video. This is yeah. our definitely most exciting <laughs> special guest <laughs> that well, we've ever had whatever, on Whatever, Nicole. Well, thank Live. you. And Nicole, you were just great. Thanks for being here today. Well, thanks for inviting uh, me. I can tell all the Farm Bureau members being very proud of Nicole today. Did a great job representing uh, the issues uh, that are important to the Farm Bureau. It was a really good meeting. It was. I mean, truly, we had, uh, you think about it, we had grain, we had cows, we had sheep represented today. Mm -hmm. And to really touch so many important issues here to Montana agriculture. And you summed it up so well, because you, you really represent all these interests uh, as, as we talk today about the, uh, the importance of rolling back these regulations in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, really some good news coming out of D.C. I mean, mm -hmm. when's the last time you heard good news coming out of D.C.? Oftentimes, you're like wondering, wondering, oh no, what's coming next? Right. Guess what? We have good news. We're, uh, Scott Pru, the EPA, is going to roll back WOTUS. He's yeah. going to roll back that, uh, that EPA power plan that just would kill us here in Montana, kill our tax base. we got good news. The Keystone Pipelines got approved about an hour ago by the president. Yes, there's some timely I mean, stuff there. That's, that's breaking news. <laughs> about an hour ago, President Trump signed the approval of the Keystone Pipeline in the Oval Office. And that's huge. You, know, you don't always think about making the connection to Montana agriculture, but think about it. It's $80 million of tax revenues to eastern Montana. That's how we keep the schools and the teachers and the infrastructure that are so important to support the families who are involved in farm and ranch operations in eastern Montana. This is, this is great news. Absolutely. But today, you know, we had a chance to talk about the, um, the challenge we have with trade right now, how important that's going to be for the long haul for our Montana farmers and ranchers. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about 95% of the world's consumers are outside the United States. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal, isn't it? Uh, the importance of Japan and China talked about the Brazilian beef issues, you know, some of the import channel they face right now, and there looks like there's some fraud and corruption issues. Some of their inspection stations were actively engaged right now, sent some letters out there, pushing back hard. I'll be over in Asia next month. Looks like I'll be in Japan and China. And my number one mission and goal over there will be talking about trade and talking about agriculture. That's great. I mean, 70% of Montana's wheat crop goes across the water. Mm -hmm. Yes, that has huge impacts. And we certainly right. appreciate that you are are waving the flag for Montana agriculture with trade and with regulatory reform and yeah. so many other things. Well, we've got a big farm bill coming forward here. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I'm the only member of the Montana delegation on the Agriculture Committee. So I'm very proud to be on the Senate Ag Committee, serving with Senator Pat Roberts, the chairman. So we'll have a lot to do there. Uh, yesterday was a big day for agriculture because we had uh, Governor Sonny Perdue, the uh, governor of Georgia, uh, a former uh, dairy farmer, veterinarian, governor of Georgia, and now will be our next secretary of ag. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to do a great job. He, I agree. He, he's a big fan of Montana. I had a chance to, I think I've met him four times since uh, he began this process going forward to be the next secretary. He did a stellar job yesterday in the hearing. Uh, I think he'll sail through confirmation, which is not easy to do right now in the United States Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. We get a lot of opposition from the Democrats on virtually everybody we put forward. We get opposed. But I, I think I think uh, Sonny Purdue is going to be one of these non-controversial. There's a good thing for agriculture. That's a great thing for agriculture. It's a great, you're right about that. Um, our organization has been supporting him. Glad to hear that you feel that he's going to be great for us too. And yeah. it's pretty fun that our American Farm Bureau president is also from Georgia, and so we're always reaching out to him and saying, keep keep Western. Uh, the Western United States in mind when you're talking about ag policy, and it sounds like you've been doing the same thing with Mr. Purdue, and he's been very receptive. He has been, you know, and I, we all understand the fact he's from a state where they focus on peaches, peaches and peanuts and pecans there, uh, and, but he, he completely gets the fact that out here in Montana it's going to be about cows, it's going to be about sheep, it's going to be about barley, it's going to be about wheat, it's going to mm -hmm. be about pulse crops, and uh, he gets that, and I just really appreciate it. He understands the heart of agriculture. Mm -hmm. and whether you're in the southeast part of the U.S. or the northern part of the U.S., uh, we share the same common values, the same concerns about the overreach of the federal government, mm -hmm. the importance of access to uh, international markets. Uh, Sonny gets that. You know, when you're a governor, you've got to be the cheerleader of your state. You're out there doing trade deals and promoting your state. 
He, so he comes with that kind of that salesmanship. You need that. We got to be promoting Montana egg mm -hmm. and U.S. egg. So uh, I, I think we've got a great guy there. You know the bottom line. He's just a really good guy. Mm -hmm. He is just yeah. really. He is. Uh, he's got a heart of gold, and he's become a good friend already. And uh, that's the kind of guy you want to have on your team. I think, I think he's really good for Montana too. Great. Yeah. And you mentioned the farm bill. We're very excited. To yeah, farm bill's coming. You know, we're going to be, uh, it just seems like we just finished up the last farm bill. It does, it? it does. And here we are again, mm -hmm. but uh, starting that process, the importance of protecting that, that, that safety net of crop insurance that uh, we'll continue to defend, uh, strengthen that program. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and then I, I think it's going to be um, really between the farm bill and trade and regulations. If we can continuing to make progress in those three areas, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have a good couple of years. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Well, um, we were able to visit with you at the beginning of March uh, with several members, and I agree with you. It seems that there's a new attitude in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's people are agree or people feel like things are going to start moving mm -hmm. and we're going to start seeing some positive changes for Montana and I so agree. We're really you, you know, Nicole, I kind of thinking about the, uh, you know, it really is, it went like from nighttime to daytime. <laughs> and under the Obama administration, it was always like, you can't do that, you can't do that. The, the federal government's coming in to tell us what we couldn't do. Mm. And then the Trump administration now it tells us, here's what you can do. Uh, we can have access to international markets, we can build the Keystone Pipeline, uh, we can push back on these uh, regulations and the other way of life. Uh, we can at least delist the grizzly bear and let mm -hmm. the states have management of the bears, like we did with the wolf a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like this can-do attitude coming out of Washington. It's time to shake that place up, and uh, Trump's doing that. That's a good thing. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We look forward to, you know, seeing where we how we can move forward with all of the great things that we talked about in the meeting. And Thanks. really appreciate your time. Now you've got a lot of other stops to make, so I don't. Well, want I got to give a shout out tonight. I know, and Nicole, you do a great job <laughs> for the Farm Bureau, but I want to give a shout out to our FFA ears. Yeah. Uh, I know you guys work closely with FFA. Absolutely. I'll be at their graduation ceremony tonight in Great Falls. In fact, I was with their state leaders just this morning doing some radio interviews. Oh, wow, you've They're already just, had a long day. So, you know, you think about agriculture, that first word of FFA is about future, right? Mm -hmm. This is, you know, we've got to preserve these international markets for the future of ag, but the people are what really matter at the end of the day. Yep. And that's why I'm just a big fan of FFA, too. So I'll be there tonight. And uh, so it's, me, it's a good ag day here in Great Falls. That's right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, really Nicole. Appreciate your time. You did a great job. Thank yeah. you.